What's going on everybody, Kleepas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G and going over whether or not it's still a good phone to buy in late 2022. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button, and if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So with the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G, we're getting a 6.5 inch TFT display with a resolution of 720 P, a PPI of 270, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and an 81.6% screen to body ratio. So in general for what it is, especially considering this phone is well over a year old by now, the display really isn't too bad. But that being said, compared to a lot of other phones, including the successor, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, it really does fall short in quite a few different ways. First of all, compared to something like the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, a lot of phones in this general mid-range have much better display technology. The A33 5G, for example, has an AMOLED display, and so do phones like the OnePlus Nord and 25G, which again is more of a mid-range phone like this one was when it was was first released. In addition to this, with only a 720p resolution, despite the image looking pretty decent for what it is, I want to say nowadays most phones like this have 1080p resolutions. So in general, if you're really consuming a lot of content and you want a really good quality image, while again this phone really doesn't look bad, there are a lot of better options out there. Another thing I do want to point out is that with the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G, this version of the phone in my hand does only have a 60Hz refresh rate, but keep in mind, there are some versions that have 90Hz. In case you don't know, what that's going to do is make the movement on the screen a little bit faster and smoother. So if you're doing something like watching a video, playing a game, stuff like that, things are going to be a little bit more fluid and premium. But that being said, again, this specific version of the phone in my hand does only have a 60 hertz display. And with that being said, keep in mind, nowadays, pretty much every A-series phone at this level, like the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, A53 5G, A23 5G, and even the A13 5G for that matter, those phones all have at least 90 hertz displays, if not 120 hertz. So overall, like I said, the bottom line here is, while the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G really doesn't have a bad display for what it is, by today's standards, you can do a lot better. Now for storage, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G is getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. That being said, keep in mind this phone in my hand does have 128, but pretty much any version of this phone you get in the US, especially from a carrier if they still have it, is only going to have 64. Now honestly, for more of an entry level mid-range phone, this is actually pretty consistent. When it comes to phones in this price range, or at least the price this phone is currently going for, most of them really are only going to have 64. There are some out there in that more entry level mid-range that do have 128, but in general, even in late 2022, 64 is pretty realistic. That being said, for the average user, this should be at least acceptable. I mean, it's still not really a lot of storage. If you have a bunch of apps and games and stuff like that, it is going to fill up pretty quickly. But I would say for most people, as long as you're more mindful of what you're putting on the phone and you make sure to utilize the micro SD card expansion, you shouldn't have too many problems. Now for security features, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G does have face unlock and we are getting a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key as well. So definitely nice to have two options here. But let's go ahead and give the fingerprint scanner a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive, no issues at all. And again, remember, this phone does have face unlock too, so if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, honestly, for being a pretty old phone at this point, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G does have a nice camera setup. In the front here, we got a water drop notch for the selfie camera. This camera is 13 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. And then for video, this phone can record in up to 4K in the rear camera and 1080p in the front. So again, in general, despite being about a year and a half old by now, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G does have a really good camera and not only does it have a bunch of features including an ultra wide camera and a macro camera, but the photo quality is also really good as well. And again, with this phone you can record 4K videos, which is definitely nice because for an older mid-range phone, that's really something you're not going to see every day. In fact, for that matter, the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, which I would personally consider better than this phone in pretty much every other way, can't record in 4K, whereas this phone can. So in general, if you're taking a lot of photos, recording a lot of videos, and you're looking for a really affordable option that not only has a bunch of features and takes nice photos, but also can record 4K videos, then the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G is going to be a great choice. Now as far as RAM and processor go, with the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G, we're getting 6GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 725G processor. So when it comes to the overall performance, I will say this phone is a little bit outdated, but honestly it's still not really bad. For what it is, it does get the job done, and if you're doing more basic activities like web browsing, social media, streaming content, 
content like videos and music, and maybe some light mobile gaming, Day32 5G will absolutely get the job done, but compared to a lot of the newer phones like its successor, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G, it might leave a little to be desired. Honestly, between 2021 and 2022, mid-range 5G phones have really come a long way, and despite this really not being a slow phone, if performance is really important to you, then you can definitely do better. Now that being said, I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on it, and here are the scores I got. What I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and comparing your results to these, and that's going to give you a better idea of whether or not this phone will be an upgrade for you. If you're coming from more of a lower end phone, then this phone might actually be a pretty good upgrade, but if you're coming from something like an older flagship phone for example, then chances are it might not be. But again, on one hand, for what it is, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G does have pretty good performance, but in general, compared to most newer mid-range phones, it really isn't that impressive. Now that being said, one area where the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G is still really impressive is the battery. With this phone, we're getting a 5000 mAh battery that supports 15 watt fast charging. So on one hand, while it doesn't have the best fast charging in the world, the battery size is definitely impressive. So you can expect to get great battery life and longevity here. With the 5000 mAh battery, in the US at least, that's pretty much the largest battery you can get in a smartphone. So if you're in a situation where you're maybe not always around a charger, then a phone like this is definitely going to be a great choice. In addition to this, with 15 watt fast charging, although it's definitely not the best fast charging in the world, and nowadays most of the newer A series phones in this level have 25 watt fast charging, in my experience, the charging speeds are still really good with this phone, so when it comes to this, most people are probably going to be perfectly fine. In addition to this, this phone does have NFC, so if you like to make contactless mobile payments using tap and pay, you'll be happy to know you can do that with this phone. But in conclusion, is the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G still worth buying in late 2022? In general, while of course at this point I would absolutely not pay full price for this phone, if you can get it for under $200, or preferably under $150, then I do think it still is a solid option. The performance, while not being that impressive compared to its successor, is still definitely decent. While you can do much better when it comes to the display, it still doesn't look bad, and if you're really not going to be on your phone all the time, and you're just maybe watching a couple videos here and there, browsing social media from time to time, stuff like that, you will get a decent experience. The storage, while not being that impressive, is still also acceptable. The phone does have a really large battery, and it has a really nice camera setup that again can record 4k videos. So in general, if you're looking for a really affordable 5G phone that has decent performance, an okay amount of features, a large battery, an acceptable display, and a really nice camera setup, then assuming you get it for a good price, even at the end of 2022, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G is still worth considering. Now once again, if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.